uh, systems business, and um, they were they were quite amazed at the progress that's been made by by really a small team. But uh, yeah, just to come back to drone scan, we, we've we've been at this as an indoor robotic scanning for for five years. Uh, we have a, fa- a a group business that's a lot older that's been spending time in scanning, um, and we've been at this. Uh, for a long time using drones and thanks to Kent who said to us we love what you're doing with the scanning head and the recognition um, <clears throat> now we've got a project where we've got a short mass system and we we just think that this 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 AGV and AMR has incredible potential um, to be autonomous and and of course having spent now a long time with the system we we completely agree and customers are seeing that the autonomy is the big solution point. So yeah, that's a bit about drone scan. Um, I think I'm going to let Kent go to the next slide and just kind of kick off um, a little bit of, of his side around maybe Kent the the whole you know what it's obviously started as a product house. And although you guys want to be a customer, you're still very close to um, being the product owners of the of the Meerkat. So I'll let you uh, kick off there. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Craig. Um... I've I've been involved in uh, inventory uh, with, with operations management for, for forever. So um, for the last 15 years or so, I've been working in um, IT solution delivery, and then uh, the last three, uh, then about uh, five years ago, as business development um, lead for for IT within DHL um, APAC. So the um, the Meerkat concept came up. Um, I'd always uh, imagined that one day uh, a repurposed forklift truck or, or, or some type of vehicle would be really useful to, to go around and check reserve pallet racking. Um, obviously, reserve pallet rack checks uh, are, are expensive. They take a lot of uh, time. Um, typically, we find um, anywhere between uh, 60 and 100 checks an hour is, is, is done with a, a person in a scissor lift. Um, it's dangerous. People are working at heights. Um, in Australia, in the middle of summer, it gets really hot when you're working uh, up near the roof. Um, so I, I was looking for a solution that um, gave us the ability to scan the pellets in, in the racking. Um, I see that we have a lot of um, inventory checks done in the reserve racking where we go up and count full pellets. And um, we seriously question the value in having to count a pellet that's exactly the same as it was from the day it arrived in the warehouse and having to count that in you know, up to four four times a year for, for some clients um, and then of course um, a lot of clients still have an annual stock take so the solution concept was to um, to, to make an autonomous vehicle um, I saw um, a, a MIA robot um, one of the uh, local agencies um, showed me the, the MIA robot and how it drove around and and it was real um, aha moment where I uh, I thought well that 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 is the missing link it does all of the safety things driving around it's relatively simple to program and set up um, all I have to do is um, build a platform a, a top module um, which would allow me to deliver uh, cameras and scanners uh, up to the top of a, a warehouse racking system so. I, I approached Mia and um, and Drone Scan and and asked them if they would um, support a project, um, which which they both uh, were very excited about. Um, I then pitched the idea through an innovation funnel called uh, the Startup Lab, and Startup Lab was a, an internal um, DHL program to to get ideas and innovation concepts from the, from the factory floor. Um, that was a heck of an exercise where. Um, uh, we flew to Germany and uh, did a whole lot of uh, pitch training, and then we did like a Shark Tank contest over over three days, um, and then on the last day we pitched to to a, a, a couple of hundred people in, a, in an audience. Um, the, the 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 sixteen uh, was cut down to eight, and uh, we made the final, and uh, we pitched to the, the 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 board of directors of DHL Global, which was um, absolutely mind blowing to think that. Uh, you know, somebody from Australia could uh, sit in the boardroom of DHL Global um, and, and pitch to the board. Um, we were lucky, we got through um, and uh, we got funding for, for the idea and uh, um, the, the relationship with uh, Mia and Drone Scram the, the, then, then took off and, and we worked on uh, building the, the platform from there. Yeah, great. 
Um, I thought maybe it would be, be nice to have a look at a quick video. Um, Elise, I don't know if you can bring up Meerkat Run 2. Like it's just quite useful. What you see on screen is a, is a picture of Kent, uh, Ken working working out in some of the early days of unpacking that big mast. Um, and I think it's worth also talking just for everyone to know that where we are, Kent has two units. We have a unit in South Africa. We're looking at getting these called and prototype units. Um, and we have we have a journey ahead of us of about six months to really recertify and industri industrialize these these units, make them uh, CE, CE marked. Um, so yeah, th these have been units we've built about five. Um, Kent, maybe good to describe how you as both customer and product manager are using them in those two warehouses. And I know today you're moving them around a bit. So for the guys on the call, I think what's interesting is that the next six months is very much about building demand with customers that, that the expectation will be 2021, there'll be an industrial version uh, that certainly DHL want to consume. Um, and and you know, they, they are the customer here, the primary customer. But of course, um, we, we do want to see uh, other 3PLs and other customers consume the same technology so that the whole the whole program can be more can be more viable. Uh, but Kent, yeah, while we get to there's a nice video. So they thanks Elise, you've you brought up a bit of a animation. So maybe Kent, I mean even as it's running, tell us sure. a bit about those Australian sites and, and what this is achieving. And I think and I think importantly what what it's achieving in those kind of no staff environment because that's what's exciting to customers when they hear that they have something that they can go home and leave it to work. And I mean, you, you've told us stories of being at home during COVID and setting this thing to work for, for nine, 10 hours on its own, right? Yeah, so so what you see in the screen there is the, the, the imagery robot driving. It drives uh, on the left-hand side of the road because I programmed it and I'm from Australia. Um, <laughs> so it, it drives, it drives uh, down the left-hand side and scans one level at a time. We, we, we looked at both sides, but um, the, the, the distance the scanners need to be from the, the bar, barcode and the fact that uh, left hand and right hand sides are racking in an aisle aren't always the same level. Um, it doesn't really make sense to try and do both sides at once. So the, the, the inventory robot is fully autonomous. Um, we've developed it so that it's totally independent of um, site infrastructure. We don't require any Wi-Fi or uh, uh, any, any, any special infrastructure such as uh, reflectors or tape or or lines or guide rails or anything like that. Um, we basically come into a warehouse, map the warehouse. We then create a 3D cube of the warehouse, which is basically breaking all of the pallet locations down into individual uh, locations. So every location that a pallet can sit in has a X, Y, Z reference for the bottom left-hand corner. And then the, the, the pallet itself or the location itself then has a, um, a beginning and an end uh, as you travel and it has a depth and a, and a height so um, as you as you're driving around we, we uh, autonomously fully automatically um, uh, the system uh, moves the mast to the level that's being scanned and we drive around and scan that level until we've finished that level and then the system automatically adjusts to the next level um, be that up or down and uh, we drive around and, and scan all the different layers um, yeah, it's fully autonomous. We run this at night. Uh, we, we, we get an extract from the WMS at, uh, at the end of the business day when things stop moving because we shut our warehouses down in Australia. We just don't have enough people to run our warehouses 24-7. Um, so basically the last thing at night the guy does is he um, loads the file onto the machine, um, puts a delay start for 15-20 for minutes on, um, goes and locks up, turns the lights off, turns the alarms off and goes home and the inventory robot starts up and runs around. Um, we've designed it so that it, um, it doesn't um, have any obvious heat sources and uh, it doesn't set off the alarms. Um, we're, we're running it. Um, uh, last night I ran uh, one machine in, in a site. We did two and a half thousand locations in, in, in six hours. We, we uh, we averaged uh, 400 locations an hour. If you go back to what I said originally, where we were um, talking 60 to 100 an hour, um, so we're getting four to five times the productivity out of the machine um, as, as, as it is at the moment, and um, that will only improve as we as we continue to develop the uh, the technology layer. 
So what you see in front of you is what we call the, we have the Mia robot at the bottom, which is our, our, our engine. On top of that, we have our trolley system, which is um, carrying all of the um, payload of, of, of batteries and pneumatic uh, control systems for the mast height management. Um, we chose pneumatics um, because the, um, the, 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 the air cushion, um, the mast, the camera systems are on, a, on an air powered mast. So um, we get very, very little vibration. We get very good clarity in our, in our scanning. Um, we, we, the last, last night's scan, we had 98.2% uh, uh, read rate on the barcodes. So there was only a very small percentage of barcodes in the warehouse that we didn't read. Um, and as part of our regular um, human-based cycle counting, we'll send people out to those locations that we didn't scan and get them to fix up the labels so that next time we uh, we drive past, we scan. So there's still, there's still um, uh, uh, people involved in inventory within our warehouses. We, the, the warehouses that he's running at, the, the people uh, comment that uh, instead of looking for the problems, they know where the problems are and they go and work on the problems. So their, their life, uh, their, their work has become much, much more productive. Um, so typically, typically in a warehouse, you might have, um, you know, 99.7, 99.8% accuracy in your, in your reserve racking, um, which means that you've got um, two or three pellets per thousand where you've got a problem and you don't know you've got a problem until you have to pick it and ship it for an order. And that's where the system comes in. Um, we've, we've now got a, 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 a batch of, uh, or a customer in a warehouse where they've got uh, just under 12,000 pellets. And we know confidently that there are uh, no positional errors in that in that inventory. So every time they go to pick an order, the, the, they pick it first time. There's no referrals back to inventory. Um, we know that we scan these pallets um, uh, once every 10 days. Um, so we know that uh, that pallet's there and it's still there um, on an ongoing basis. Yeah. Themselves. They're yeah. concerned about making sure it's not covered. Um, even things as uh, the feedback of, of getting barcodes made bigger and clearer, yeah. um, the operational impact um, on that is, 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 has been um, a, a very, very rewarding um, outcome yeah. from, from the project. The quality yeah. of the people receiving and put away has improved dramatically, they, yeah. they, and they're making the life easier, not just for the machine, but for all of the people that go to pick these pallets yeah. off off the racking. We've, we've done a couple of barcode changes for, for particular customers um, because the machine couldn't scan them. And when yeah. we've changed it over, the operators have said, man, even for just my normal work, this is so much faster. I don't have to try and scan. I don't have to get off my forklift truck. And the other point about the other point about the infrastructure was that we don't even read the barcode labels on the racking. So we get yeah. our positional information from our X, Y, Z coordinates. We don't yeah. we don't rely on the racking. So if somebody's bent a beam and they've stuck a replacement in and it's got no barcode labels on it, that doesn't bother uh, the, the Meerkat system. We're only interested in the license plate that's on the pallet. And, and that, um, you know, we've had scenarios where people have pulled the, the, the racking out of uh, level 80 because it's too close to a sprinkler or something like that. And they've, they've fitted yeah. that beam down in level 20 and in between level two and uh, one and two and created a, a, a half pallet location. So it's got a level eight um, barcode on it, but it's in level 25. Um, yeah. doesn't bother, doesn't bother the system. We just go past it and read and read the pallet label and say, this is the exact position that the pallet's in. And this is where the label is on that pallet. Yeah, no, amazing. And I mean, we know from having done projects where we had to rely on scanning the location first and then scanning the pallet to, to correlate the two um, because you just didn't have that positioning of, of where you were. Whereas, you know, the mirror knows exactly where it is and it knows from heart. So to know in three dimensions what you're looking at sounds simple, but is actually a massive achievement um, in, in environments that can be so diverse um, in terms of, as you say, how they're set up and how they're structured. And that's what's needed by the industry is to go in and really be tolerant of what they have. But most warehouses will look something somewhat similar. If you have the space, you have the flooring, um, you know, you just want to get going. And, and you're dealing with massive volumes, right? And we're talking about 
40,000, 50,000, I mean, even some environments, 100,000 pallets. Those are just huge jobs. And I think the big point you've made is you're not replacing people, you're just making their job a lot more effective. And that's what people want to hear that are running these warehouses, right? Absolutely, yeah. People, the first first comment I get when I present to to a, a new account team, a new uh, inventory team, um, and we, we we brief them, we tell them, you know, how the meerkat drives, and you know, it won't cross over onto the other side of the road if there's if there's nothing to make it dodge, uh, nothing to dodge in the lane. It just drives up and down. Um, like I said, we do this at night in Australia, so. Um, you know, tonight, Friday night, I'll get the files at um, at the end of the business day. Um, I'll run this machine all weekend. In the warehouse, I'm doing um, um, the, 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 a major rollout, um, and we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the relocatability of the machines shortly. But um, I'll run that machine. Uh, we'll, we, we get um, between 14 and 15 hours out of a, out of a battery cycle, um, and at 400 an hour. You know, we'll be doing five, five and a half thousand locations um, tonight, and then tomorrow yeah. during the day on Saturday we'll do another five thousand, and then it will recharge by the time I sort of go to bed Saturday night, and I'll run it again, so it runs overnight Saturday night. Um, so you can see that we're, we're probably going to do twenty five thousand pallets this weekend in this warehouse. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean these things that would take big teams a long time to do traditionally, right? Well, you, just, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to justify the cost. You know, that's like doing yeah. a stock take every weekend. You know, we can yeah. set the we can set the machine up to run till it's flat, and it when it when it gets low, it autonomously drives over to the charging station and and gets on the charger. Yeah. So so yeah. it's ready to ready to go again. Um, yeah. You know, as part of our development cycle, we'll 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 build it so that the queue is maintained and that it it, it just chews through the queue that you give it. No matter how yeah. many hours there are, that it goes away, does a, a 90, 95% recharge, and then, um, then, then chuffs off and carries on again until it runs flat. And that's the <laughs> that's the sort of operation uh, we're looking at. You know, harsh yeah. harsh on harsh on the robot. Um, yeah. We're we're, on, we're only travelling at uh, 20 centimeters a second, <laughs> and yeah. and and the robot's done 370 kilometers now. <laughs> <laughs> at least um, and you know if you look at what we will do more of going forward in this project it's really at the top there so that black um, apparatus is our scanning head that's what we focused on we've happened to have built a lot of the lower parts as well in collaboration with 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 DHL um, but yeah that robot that trolley will increasingly be farmed out to to to, to other providers and then the solution we will focus on is that scanning head which of course gives us uh, our Z position and feeds back. So, so yeah, at the moment, like I said, for, for the for the guys looking at customers and sales, we will be running projects. Um, we'll be looking at supporting this in different areas. Um, and, and key for the guys on the call, we absolutely see see the mere partnership as as and, and the guys in, in mere distribution as actually potentially selling the, the, the mere as a solution. So I had a call with a UK distributor. And I said, look, we, we, we just want to sell you and supply to you key parts and a kit. And if you're selling a, a, a mirror, you should really be, be looking to potentially also sell uh, a, a meerkat solution as well. Position, uh, positional accuracy is really the key to, to, to what we're doing because we know very, very precisely where we are in the warehouse. Now, 80% um, of that comes from the mirror robot. Um, the mirror robot has a very good idea of where it is using the uh, laser scanning system and the SLAM mapping um, within that, um, the laser system. So, so we, we've enhanced that. We, we had um, uh, in our food grade warehouses and some of our automotive warehouses, the, the two ultimate extremes of, 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 the, uh, of the spectrum. Our food grade warehouses, the, the floor is very slippery because it's very, very clean. Um, so much so that um, um, we we uh, we our, our boots squeak when we walk on, on a lot of our, our floors in, in, in our farmer and food um, uh, yeah. factories. And the other extreme is is where we've got um, high volume um, parts and, and automotive is a, is a good example where you've got lots of different products. And there the, the floors um, are slippery because there's just so much traffic in those automotive warehouses, the automotive warehouses where where there's um, you know, stuff off the tires and um, yeah. you know, the, the, the dust accumulates quite quickly, and you, even with good cleaning regimes. But 
the, the Mir robot, um, we, we get the positioning from the, the Mir, we get positioning from our own um, positioning system, which we call X-Tracker, um, which um, as we're traveling up the aisle, X is the, 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 we drive along Y and the X is where the bins are. So we call it the X-Tracker. And then we've got a height, uh, a height management system as well. So um, our X-Tracker uh, also uses um, um, some of the imagery of, of, in the warehouse or some of the structure in the warehouse, um, so things like the frames, we, we index on those and, and we revalidate our position. And typically we find that um, um, our, our positional uh, accuracy is, 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 is less than five centimetres. So we're, we're typically running less than five centimetre variance um, as, we, as we post around. Um, that means that we can place the pallets correctly in the right bin all of the time. Yeah, so we, we, we have an optical encoder on the uh, on the trolley itself, so the drive wheels may slip a little bit and the robot um, uh, compensates for that. Uh, and you can see that in the logging, it, 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 it detects slippage and it overcomes it and then corrects the robot position um, minutely but continually. Um, we want to, to avoid that, so we also have an optical encoder on, on, our, um, on our trolley wheel um, so that we've got our exact positioning without any wheel slip. And then we enhance that further with our, our frame detector. Um, and we're yeah. in the process of developing an image-based um, detector so that um, we can differentiate between um, you know, pallets and, and, and frames um, much more precisely. Um, yeah, great, the, great. The, 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 the exercise of, of, of you're going to go to the 3D map uh, screen in, in, in three dimensions, like you can see on the screen now. We've got a, a, a warehouse generator we can use through our 3D map software, um, and that will then allow you to drill down into each individual uh, location as a, as a cube, and that's where the scanners are, are looking for, for inventory. Um, if we've got a half height pallet, we, we only take input from the um, the, the, the sensors that are in front of the pellet that we're interested in. Um, it, it might be that you've got half pellets. We'll, we'll drive it past each of those half, half pellet locations and, and scan the data for those. Um, we've, we've done some, some software around having double height locations so that we can scan a top half and a bottom half of a, of a location in two passes if, if there's very tall pellets. Um, and and we, we, we limit the number of scanners we, we read from if the pellets um, in shorter in height. Um, this three-dimensional um, grid builder um, gives you a really good idea of what your warehouse looks like to the system. And um, uh, Craig was saying before that I've moved these robots around. Um, both the robots have got two, two warehouses configured in them. Um, to, to start to set up a warehouse and get the mere running uh, reliably. Um, the last time I did it took nine days. So from the, from the day the um, OpsX team said, we've got a new client coming on board in this, uh, in this warehouse um, in, 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 in a month's time. Can you take the Meerkat to this site, configure it and get it running? How long will it take? Um, it took a week to configure and a week to, to do the drive round testing. Um, nine days later, we're actually scanning productive data and, and, and getting data for the, for the account. Um, we were able to follow the, um, the put away um, of that um, you know, client. So we had, we had stock coming from um, a, a, another third party warehouse. We'd, we, we'd won the business. We were able to onboard that stock and we actually um, identified pallets that have been lost in a previous stock take at the other uh, accounts um, site. Um, we, we went through and found those pallets and um, were able to report them to the, to the customer. Um, the, 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 the other client just put them on the truck and shipped them um, and, and we, we, um, we received them um, and, and, and as part of our validation, um, we're able to find those pallets. Uh, in that account, in, in, in the 15 days of transition, we corrected 30 incorrectly located pallets. So that's the that's thirty potential problems that would have been yeah. there for the, for the for the for the customer. We're going to talk a bit about so we know we can get the we've talked about getting the robot to run through allocation. Um, once we're scanning a barcode, there's there's typically a WMS on the back end, Kent, in your environments. Uh, it might be SAP, it might be something else, it's whatever the customer uses, right? 
Um, and, and, and often most customers have a feeling for where everything is because they, they put it there. Um, and therefore, when we're scanning, you can do direct, and we have done with you, and this is what, what drone scan does a lot of, is we can do real-time feedback uh, via tablet considering a connectivity is available to check and validate that what is scanning is correct, but it doesn't have to be that way either. You can go out and, and search for, for pallets specifically. Tell us a bit about how you've seen the integration options happen with, with customers' backends and their WMS systems. Sure, sure. Typically, a warehouse is set up with a, a very good grid of access points so that the uh, forklift operators and RF guns can, can stay connected as they're moving around the warehouse. Um, yeah. What, what, what happens in, in a big operation, particularly uh, a, a warehouse that's been set up for a traditional environment, all of those RF guns have a minimal packet um, uh, uh, size. They, they, they're usually text-based. They're either telnet or putty session type um, transfers. And there's tiny bits of data going backwards and forwards between the WMS, um, Manhattan or JDA, typically DHL users, and the RF gun. So you might have a, um, a, a put-away task where the, 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 the user scans the pallet, the pallet ID goes back to the WMS, the two location gets sent back to the RF gun, the operator is then coached through, either through voice or through an RF gun, to that location. Um, they read the tech check digit, and assuming that that's correct, they then get told to put it away into that location. All of that data traffic is minimal, and it's going through the access points in the warehouse. We, yeah. didn't, want to we didn't want to introduce a system that, that, that created a, a massive amount of data bit packets being transferred through the warehouse system. So our initial design is to preload the, the inventory data um, at the start of the mission um, and, and once, or the start of the task, we, we call it. Um, and once that task's loaded, once we start running the machine, we only really run an inquiry back to the WMS when we have a problem. So if we go to a location and there's supposed to be a pallet there and there's not, we'll pull a query through the web service um, to, to the, the WMS. Um, well, the design is that we will poll back to the WMS and ask what um, what's supposed to be in the location. If, if it comes back and say, look, you know, the, the, obviously at the start of the file, it, it, it might have aged and that somebody may have picked and shipped that pallet in the meantime. So we'll go back and ask the WMS what's in the location now. And if it comes back and say it should be empty, uh, then we'll undo that error and, 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 and correct it and say that that's actually correct. Same as if yeah. we find a pellet, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the WMS and say, where do you think this pellet is? And if it tells us it's in the location of where we found it, um, then we'll, 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 we'll flag that as being correct. It allows the system, therefore, to be very, very accurate with minimal impact on the WMS or on the ERP system. Um, yeah. We've also got, a, we've also got a, a, a mode where we can run the machine and not tell it where anything is in the warehouse. And every right. time it goes, every time it goes to the location, it can ask and answer that question of what's in the location, and then, then verify that in real time. We're, yeah, we're not that interested in, in the short term in, in creating cycle count groups and closing them auto automatically. Um, it's a it's a, a fair bit of a mod to the software to have a, a a third party system creating and closing cycle count groups. We're, yeah. we're often running in pharma warehouses where GMP, the good manufacturing practice, doesn't allow you to auto, auto, autonomously fix things. You have to do root cause analysis. So we're, we're just, we're just uh, handing the inventory um, team the, the data at the end of the cycle. So we, we email the, the users at the end of the scan cycle the, the, the data and um, highlight those things that need to be um, investigated. And they go out and do that during their... Uh, the following morning before the before the stock moves too much. Right. I mean, the, the point is that many, many different industry warehouses will do things different ways. And we're just, the Wearcats really just grinding out the tasks that were taken a long time, very boring, very manual. And we probably have only scratched, you know, some of the use cases of, of being able to solve for different environments. I mean, we, we've talked to an automotive environment where it's not pellets, there's many, many bins. And those are also, we think, interesting solutions that they are excited about. Um, at least let's look at the next slide just to um, and just, sort of break. Just, just, on, yeah. just on that, Craig, we've, we've also got um, like furniture warehouses where 
there's lots yeah. of overhang and lots of skinny pallets where the, there's unusual shapes and sizes of stock. Um, because we're not reading a, or limited to a, a bin being a fixed position, we can we may not tell them exactly what position that pallet's in, but we can certainly tell them which bay it's in. So yeah, you know, it's it, 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 it's it's flexible to allow you to um, to to solve a number of solutions. We can also measure how wide the pallet is um, using the, the the laser range finders that we're using. Yeah. Um, we we're, we're now recording the height of the pallet, so we can tell you what the yield. Um, in the racking as we can tell you how many pellets yeah. are less than 20%, less than 40%, less than 60%. We we, yeah. we know how tall all of the pellets are in the racking. We really have looked at that 100 that you see in the picture and you're also using the 200. What do you say those are the two mirrors that we would use predominantly going forward? I know you mentioned that as the unit gets lighter, the 100 would be perfectly acceptable, but just for the guys on, on the call that know the mirror products well, would you say, from what you know today, that the mere 100, 200 are probably the probably certainly sufficient for for, for the job as you see it at the moment? Um, look, I've 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 tried the 100 and the 200. I think the 200 is a much more robust machine from a um, control point of view. The the, yeah. the extra the extra sensors and the optical encoders, the the, the stronger motors, the lower gearing. Um, right. Makes makes the 200 an, an absolute um, brilliant fit. We can make a, a, a lighter unit and, and and match it to the near 100, um, but I just think that the motor control systems on the 200 is 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 so cool. much more superior. We, we we don't need any of the um, EST stuff, but um, yes. but the the 200s are a real uh, workhorse. Um, right. We're we're currently running at around 400 kilos for the for the whole system, and um, the the stability and and straight driving. Um, as you can see on the photo there on the left, you can see the scan system. It sits about uh, 80 centimeters off the surface of the pallet. Um, so to us, it's really important that the uh, distance the scanners are presented to the to the pallet surfaces is reasonably consistent, so that uh, uh, we get a read. If there's any deviation in the drive, then obviously the um, the speed at which the scanners are, are, are transitioning across the pallet increases and decreases as it sort of drives left to right. Um, robot itself is 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 um, uh, obviously the, the the 100 or the 200. Um, we've we've re at the moment we've repurposed and, and, and created an, an add-on for the um, for the mere charge. Um, um, the telescopic mast comes out of the communication um, industry, um, and the, the, yeah. he's from the UK. Um, and and we've got a 12 meter variant and a 15 meter variant, so we can do units that go up to um, up to. 15 meters to the top of pallet or, or 12 and a half meters to the top of pallet. Right. And there might be other shorter environments like automotive. We think we had a customer that was eight meters or six meters, you know, um, you, you'd, you'd pick the appropriate mast. So, so yeah, I mean, there's just for everyone to see the breakdown. Uh, as we said, um, you know, a, a mere distributor could well obviously be selling the top two items. Um, you know, we, we do think integrators and mere distributors could sell the whole package. Absolutely, and and you know customers change warehouses. They move beams around. The three PLs yeah. particularly um, change the racking structure around. It's relatively simple to do, but that's a service that an engineer can do, and is well within their capability. Whether an inventory controller can can understand the nuances of uh, all of the maths involved in setting it up is 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 is, is support supports um, having a, a, an external a vendor do that. The, yeah. the good thing, the good thing is that you know, most of the mere distributors are working in, with robotic arms. They're using vacuum grippers and they're using um, pressure systems within their, um, their their normal business day. So we we actually um, we have engaged with with mere head office and, and said, you know, when when we get this product ready for market with a, a certified product, we see the ideal distribution network as being your distributor network. This is really just a really uh, sophisticated top module. Um, yeah, we we think that um, it, it, it it's uh, the only one in the marketplace. Um, we've we've um, just had our patent application accepted. So the the, the robotic uh, platform with an air pad telescope with a telescopic mast is is covered by um, 
covered by our patent now, and and we see the the, the ability for a, a mere distributor to 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 do the initial install and then support the customer and maybe configure a second warehouse, um, you know, in our scenario. Um, yeah. That, that, that's something that a, a, a field service engineer would love to do. Inside the, the, the modules within the unit itself, uh, um, uh, we've, we've designed the whole system on a, a plug and play type um, type basis. We, we configure each of the um, components um, on, a, on, a, on a wireless network. Um, and and it's quite easy to add and enhance um, the core systems. I think Craig, we we only we only threw the first machine away. Since then, we've just continually upgraded the componentry within the machine, and it's really yeah. just a question of unplugging what's there and plugging a new one in and configuring the yeah. new services for that configuration. And yeah. and you've up, you've upgraded it. You know, there's there's nothing else to do. Um, yeah. the, the the IP address and and, and the software switches. Um, control all of the, the the smarts behind the scenes. So, from a user perspective, or from a, from an owner's perspective, um, it's relatively low cost to have that um, that system keep up with the times. Um, yeah. We're working on we're working on vision based solutions at the moment, where um, we're looking to um, inspect the racking itself. So we're we're looking for the beam connectors being engaged in the frames properly, the locking clips being in in the beams to make sure that the Beams are safely latched into the um, into the frames. Um, we're also looking at um, pallet overhang so that we can detect um, whether the pallets have been placed on the beams safely. Um, yeah. and, and we're we're looking at some of those things around um, the fire suppression uh, regulations. We're looking at gaps between pallets and that sort of thing. So yeah, you know, we Great. we don't see this as a finished solution that only does inventory. As we're yeah. going round and round, we can add other components and and solve other other problems. Yeah, no, great. Please, let's look at the next slide. I mean, so so really, what does the next you know sort of period look like? Um, those units you've seen that Kent is using, we consider them, you know, very very functional prototypes that are being used for production scanning. I mean, our our local South African customer, we we just spent three months in their warehouse, and we said, right, we finished the trial, we're taking it away, and they said, no, no, no we're doing the July stock take with this unit. <laughs> so, so although they're prototypes, they're, they're highly functional units as Kent has spoken to. But yes, we are on a very serious uh, mission to reindustrialize the unit. Uh, there'll be redesigns and there will be a rolling in enhancements as with any product. So what you see on the screen is really an early visualization from Kent and his team that have seen generic aspects and really making it look um, increasingly and, and function you know, like a like a bulletproof system that can that can stand up to the the harshness of the warehouse environment. The significant thing about that is that you know the customer is going to buy a mere robot, so that won't change. The customer is going to have a air powered telescopic mast, that's not going to change. Um, yeah. We're going to we're going to need a compressor. We've got a tank. We've got some solenoids and and, and control systems. It's not that complicated a, a, a piece of kit. Um, what's really, really complicated is the, the 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 programming and the development to make it look that simple. And and I think that you know there's an old adage that uh, the the more simple it looks, the harder it is um, to to, yeah. to build. And and that, that's certainly true of this product. That uh, we've yeah. we've had a couple of um, interested parties who've said, look, you know, we'd we'd like to to take up manufacturing of this. They've gone away and looked at it and come back and said, actually, this is really hard. Um, we we understand the mechanical bits. We've got no idea how you've got the whole thing to work together so cohesively. So, you know, it's a great great compliment to drone scan and and and, and the team that's been working on this. But um, and, um, and to your vision, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 you know the key to it is the flexibility and the open platform that the Mir robot is. The the fact that we can uh, use. You know, we we tell the robot where to go. We tell the robot yeah. how fast to go, and it yeah. then thinks about how it's to get to where it's got to get to. And we give it so little ability to think about how it's going to get there. It's only allowed to get to where we tell it to go one way yeah. at one speed. And we constantly monitor it. And you know, 
where do you think you are? How fast do you think you're going? Where do you think yeah. you are? How fast do you think you're going? Where do you, every three times a second, we're asking it all these questions. Yeah. And, and it's, it's the fact that it's an open platform that's allowed yeah. us to, to build such a sophisticated system above it. And, yeah. and, and uh, you know, that, that's why we think that uh, Mir is the right product for our, 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 our platform. Great. Great. I mean, Ulrich, I see some guys had to go, uh, but maybe it's a good time to really just ask to ask, see all their questions from from the floor and maybe stuff that we haven't covered covered for the guys that are interested. So maybe a good time to ha ha hit questions on a chat. I'm looking at the chat. Anyone has a particular question for their area or, or, or their you know their customer? I'd love to hear some of some of those um, some of those questions for the guys that are still around. we kind of went on the last slide. Well, Ken, uh, this question here, let me just start off the question. I mean, good presentation, very interesting product. Uh, it's really unique what, what you have done, you guys have done here. And my question is, is there a limit on how big a warehouse is? And can I operate a few robots simultaneously to cover more areas in a shorter time? Um, good questions. Um, the, the the scan rate that we're getting uh, depends on the barcode size. So with a, a very good barcode, we can do um, uh, Australian pallets at 120 centimetres wide. We can do um, around the 600 pallets with a very good barcode an hour. Um, with a less readable barcode, we, we, we may have to pull that back to two or 300 um, an hour. Um, most of the, the warehouses that I'm, I'm using in Australia are available um, 10 hours overnight and all weekend. We don't see the need for more than one in a warehouse, but, but certainly um, using the fleet management software or having one robot for, for each half of the warehouse is, is, is quite um, feasible. That you have just uh, the, the, the warehouse floor plan split, split into two maps and, and, and have the, the robot, each robot on, on a different map of that. Um, of their section of the warehouse, um, you're going. If you, if you if you're doing um, A products um, four times a year, B products twice a year, and C products once a year, and you've got a twenty thousand pallet warehouse, and you do one stock take a year, you're doing one hundred and twenty eight thousand stock checks, stock positional checks a year. Um, we're doing that each and every month. You know, we're we're, we're able to do. Um, 15, 20,000 locations a, a week. So, you know, you're dramatically checking your stock at a far higher rate than your current operation um, checking. So whether you would need to go to multiple machines, you'd need a very big warehouse to justify it, I would have thought. Um, I'm currently in a 30,000 pallet warehouse. Um, I'm looking to do uh, a wall to wall on, or, or a, a check on that every 10 days. So um, each, each, each year we should be, we should be aiming, aiming to do um, something in the order of 30 cycle, 30, 30 wall to wall checks of the reserve racking a, a year. And, and you're, you're really struggling. You, you're, you're finding the mistakes as soon as they happen. The data is all in current uh, databases. So you can find out where those mistakes are originating from. Um, the data hasn't been archived off, so we're, we're finding that also people are making less mistakes because they're being watched and and yeah. they're happy. They're, they're, they're not seeing it as threatening. They're seeing it as if there is a mistake, they've just got to go and fix it. So they might as well not make a mistake. Before it was everything was disassociated. The people doing the put away and 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 um, moving the pallets around in reserve um, weren't accountable for the mistakes that were being made because there was such a big time difference between the mistake being made and the problem being detected. Now it's the same people that are going out and fixing it that made the mistake, so they're learning. Um, you know, we haven't seen it as being threatening to anybody or nobody's come back and go, you know, I'm going to sabotage the machine. They, it's running in Australia at night, so it's just part of the, the, the infrastructure. Um, the people are really disappointed when you say you're taking it to another location. Understand. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? I mean, Ken, sometimes it's almost the, the bigger the better, right? The, the bigger warehouses customers have almost the, the larger challenges. 
Um, these are designed to be really sold for uh, relatively large warehouses. Yeah, and, and increasingly, you know, the safety is the concern that, that you can go and cycle count to, in, a, in a scissor lift, but halfway through a stock take, the scissor lift battery goes flat. So for each counting team, you need two scissor lifts. Um, we, 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 we typically get 30 to 40 scissor lifts delivered for a big stock take. You know, now we don't. Now we get five delivered. We go yeah. around. We go around and we run the machine hard the the, the, the week week or two beforehand, and we yeah. only go and investigate. And then we do sampling. We say to the customer, "You get you, you out of the out of the twenty thousand pallets, you give us you know five hundred, and we'll go and inspect those. And if there's nothing, you'll trust us for the rest." And they're they're coming back and going, "Yeah, no problem at all." Yeah. Um, we're starting to engage with our, uh, our our customers that have already um, said that we don't want to do annual stock takes. We'll do a wall to wall on a cycle count basis four times a year. We're now saying yeah. to them, how, how about we just focus on the pick faces and um, the, the 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 pallet once it's been received and put away, we'll do one physical count with a person, and after that we'll just do a machine check. So. Yeah. That cycle counting is just checking that the pallet that was received was put away and is correctly labelled. And from that point on, all we do is me mechanically check it with a meerkat, and it's been verified that the warehouse is, is, is running very accurately. And they they don't have the, the, the need for the cycle counting levels that they used to do. That's where the payback is, obviously. Yeah. I mean, for, for elevator pitch for the guys on the call to, to, for sales, I mean, 18 months. We're talking about that high level as a as a as a reasonable ROI high level. It will vary in your customer. Would you say that's a fair elevator pitch to say you can get an ROI in 18 months uh, from the cost of the of, of the unit versus uh, savings and efficiencies? Yeah, that's that's what we've we've done um, our, our calculations based on. We've been very conservative, and yeah. we pitched we pitched the the two Australian units at at a 20 month payback, um, and yeah. they're providing more benefits than um, than were envisaged, um, particularly around the innovation story. Customers in three in, in the three PL world are saying, well, what are you guys doing about using new technology? You know. Where are you using these, um, you know, Kivas or uh, Locus or uh, Ford X or Six Rivers or some of the picking systems? What are you doing? And we go, yeah, we're looking at all of that. We've, we've, we've got work and we've got programs in for, for those and RPA, robotic process yeah. automation. Um, but we've also got this inventory tool that we're using. Um, and we couldn't buy it, and we couldn't buy the the goodwill that this machine is 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 giving people from an innovation story, and it's effective yeah. innovation. It's not just it's not just fluff and mirrors. This well, is practical. actually making yeah. this is actually yeah. making their businesses better because the stock can get out the door on time every time. We can we can stage a, a load for a truck in much less time because every yeah. single pallet we go to pick is 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 there and down on the floor. Um, and, yeah. and the KPIs for that are, are, have shown that we're not stopping to go into inventory management issues. Yeah. I mean, we've done lots of projects and pilots and POCs, but you tend to do it, show the results and leave. Whereas this is a, this is a, this is a, a unit that actually goes into a pilot and stays. And, and as I said, in our, in our local DHL site, it's like three months in, they're saying, no, no, you're not going. We, we, we're signing up for this. We wanted we want to use this production, which, which is what you want to see. And it doesn't always happen with innovation projects. Often they get put back and said, okay, that was interesting, but we're going on with our normal operations here, particularly in supply chain, right? Because it's so tough to create, uh, you know, new, you know, interesting new margins. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Any other questions from the Mir guys, uh, those that are still around? Um, so there's a quick question from Rick just came in. How does Meerkat scan capture barcode of a carton on a pallet that blocked by another layer? Um, right. we're, 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 doing, we're doing positional inventory checking, Rick. We're, we're, we're checking that the right pallets in the right location and that the empty locations are in fact empty. So we'll tell you that there's a pallet out of position. We're not actually checking the contents of the pallet. Um, typically yeah. within a WMS, within a warehouse management software solution, um, all of the attributes of the inventory are stored under the LPM. 
So the license plate is the is is the number plate on the car. Who's in the car is 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 known from the time you you receive that pallet because you lock the doors and you put it away. That doesn't change if you don't touch the pallet. Um, putting people up in the high expensive um, consumer goods um, cycle counting regimes is tempting them. They're, they're looking at cameras, they're looking at uh, phones, they're looking at expensive uh, items. Um, if you're not using people up in the racking doing cycle counting, you're not putting your product in harm's way. Um, you're not tempting people. You're not having people touch the product at all after you've received it. You stretch wrap it, you label it, and you put it away, and you know it's there and it stays there and it doesn't move. If it does move, you'll pick it up. So where we're, we're validating the, 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 the pallet is, is where you said it would be and it stays there. If somebody moves it, you detect that. Um, the other thing about that is that the, 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 the product itself on the pallet, we've started exploring um, carton recognition um, software and we've got a, a couple of vendors that can actually uh, validate that the carton um, branding and layout is consistent across that skew against a, 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 a carton library, so a, a surface library. And we can also compare the same skew across the warehouse and check that all of the pallets look the same so that um, if there is the wrong product labeled, we can start to pick up on that. But um, that's all, that's all um, uh, future. Uh, again, that's, that's just additional payload. Um, because we've got a, 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 a massive amount of um, power, um, we, use, we use batteries as, as ballast, so we've got more power than we need on the unit. So we can do all of this processing online in real time. We don't have to go offline and go to a cloud-based service and pump, pump all that video data um, into the cloud and analyze it and get the answer back. We're doing all of this processing on board the system in real time so that we're we're, we're able to follow the machine around and listen to it, say, it's okay, that's okay, that's okay, empty, um, been wrong. Yeah. So we, we, we do all of that processing in real time. Great, great. Cool. Um, so yeah. inventory accuracy, yeah, we've, 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 we've not found, you know, I had a, a customer who onboarded um, four trucks a day process, so that's um, 20 truckloads of stock. Um, at the end of that, they said there were no errors. Um, the next morning I handed them a report saying here's five inventory errors. So <laughs> straight away we were able to fix those errors and they can now reliably say that their inventory is perfect um, because it had a had 100% match on the, on the next scan run. So people do direct and put away, people do make mistakes, and um, we, we, we find those mistakes very, very quickly. Yeah, awesome. And we've, we've been running in, in uh, one warehouse um, after a month. The guy said to me after the first week where I had to do all of that checking, um, I haven't had one person come to me who said, I can't find this pallet for this order. So. <laughs> He said it's been it, it, it's been it's been a month since anybody's come to talk to me. I'm having to go and do other things now. I mean, that's a that's a proof point right there, right? Sure. <laughs> so we're now starting to talk about those um, warehouses rather than having an inventory person for each account. Um, we're talking about having site inventory people because there's just not enough boring mundane work to to keep all of the account based inventory people that busy. Yeah. And I think that's a takeaway for the guys on the call is that, you know, if you need support having these conversations with your customer um, or your, your 3PL that you think is interested, please let us know. We're happy to support you with this content, uh, videos and getting us interested. I'm having increasingly a couple calls a week to support um, distributors. And as I said, first, first one was this week with the UK. Certainly be happy to support you guys in your region as you want to get customers on a detailed call to ask the same questions um, and understand how they might how they might do something this year still um, and how they might build demand in their environment for, for next year. And of course, a meerkat sale is a, is a mere sale. 
Um, I thought it was quite quite curious that the Meerkat and Venture robot is also MR. So there's something in there as well. <laughs> What else, guys? Uh, we're coming up on, on 10 minutes to go. Ulrich and Elise, anything else from the from the floor? Any more questions from the floor, everyone? If not, then we'll conclude the webinar. I'll, uh, a big thank you to Ken and Craig. It's, it has been very, very informative, and this is a very, very unique solution where I think right. a lot of the warehouses can actually really use it to efficiently for, for their operation. And just again, thank you, Mia, for your support. We, we uh, see you as a very valuable partner in this program. Um, Drone Scan uh, obviously have um, been working with us very closely and uh, and we continue to get uh, great support back from um, from both our local agency, from from mobile automation in Melbourne, from the the Lars and the the team in in Singapore, and of course your your team in in, in Hong Kong, uh, where we seem we seem to um, have uh, regular regular conversations, and uh, we we appreciate the support. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, guys. It's uh, yeah, it's been a great, uh, great webinar. I think very, uh, very interesting solution that uh, that we should soon be ready to to uh, to market uh, more aggressively. Uh, if anyone in uh, the APEC region, any of the distributors, if they have any questions or any other customers on the call have uh, have questions, then uh, please contact your local uh, Mir uh, representative. And um, and they will make sure to to reach out to uh, to uh, Craig and Kent and, and myself for uh, for further information.